Tragic, but justified. Those words rang out across the country today when officials in North Carolina announced the officers involved in the shooting death of Andrew Brown would not face charges. Brown's family, however, says the shooting was an execution. Tonight, we are breaking down the DA's decision as Elizabeth City braces for the fallout. Then the mayor of Atlanta weighs in, Keisha Lance Bottoms. She's been through this before and has a unique perspective. She'll share it tonight on Banfield. Elizabeth City, North Carolina. Get used to hearing that name. It is the latest in a string of cities that have erupted into protest after a shooting death at the hands of police. But this time, the police are holding firm that their officers did nothing wrong when Andrew Brown charged at them in his car and they opened fire, killing him. When weighing the degree of force used, a prosecutor must pay careful attention to the facts and circumstances of each particular case, including the severity of the crime at issue, whether the suspect poses an immediate threat to the safety of officers or others, and whether he is actively resisting arrest or attempting to evade arrest by flight. Using these parameters, I find that the facts of this case clearly illustrate the officers who used deadly force on Andrew Brown Jr. did so reasonably and only when a violent felon used a deadly weapon to place their lives in danger. They say their extensive investigation proves the shooting was justified and say the officers will be reinstated. But they also concede that they could have done better. How the city reacts is quite another issue altogether. I want to bring in my guests tonight. Trial lawyer Mark Garagos, who co-hosts the Reasonable Doubt podcast. Attorney Trent Copeland with the law firm Brown, George and Ross. And from A&E's hit docuseries Live PD, Deputy James Craigmile, who is also a canine instructor. And since, Deputy Craigmile, you're the only uh, police officer on the panel tonight, I'll start with you. It's, it hasn't been uh, happening lately that we've heard that officers won't be charged. It seems to, you know, be more of a trend that they are charged. So were you surprised today? No, I wasn't. Um, with the climate in today's society that we have going on, all of these cases are combed over with a fine tooth comb. You, nobody is rushing to judgment on these cases, especially whenever all the facts are there in front of them. We're looking at body cam footage. They're looking at footage from outside sources that may be caught on ring doorbells or cell phone cameras. Uh, all of the facts in the case, I believe, not just this case, but George Floyd and, and all of these other cases, I think that they're being really scrutinized and really gone through with a fine tooth comb. And that goes for both sides of law enforcement and um, in this case, the suspect. So Trent Copeland, uh, jump into the fray here and tell me your thoughts, because I, I sense from our conversations and even the look on your face right now, you feel very, very differently from what the DA announced today. I do, and it's not surprising. And, you know, I, I, a couple of things I take away, Ashley, from um, the DA's press conference today. And the first is use the words accountability and transparency. Those were some of the first things that he said when he started to describe why he made the decision he made. But if transparency really was at the root of this, if that was his North Star, then it seems to me that this family deserves and this community deserves. Community that I grew up 40 miles north of. I can tell you that this community is hurting. And if transparency was the issue, then he should have released the entire body cam video, not broken up segments, not carefully culled, captivated, small video portions, but all of it. So this family and this city that is grieving would have a better understanding of exactly what happened fully, completely, and comprehensively. I was also struck by the fact that, you know, he went to great lengths to describe the statutory and the case law that justifies these officers shooting Mr. Brown. And he said, look, there are, there are a myriad of circumstances and things happen in uh, split seconds. And these are dynamic, ever-changing circumstances where officers have to make a split second decision. But what he didn't say, is that these officers can also make a rapidly changing split-second decision in that kind of environment where they choose not to shoot 
a man in the back of his head who's unarmed and whose car appears to be moving away from them. So the idea that this was a robust and thorough and comprehensive investigation that led to the facts that are indisputable, the only facts that we could have drawn uh, an inference from is that these officers engaged in a justified shooting. I just don't buy it. Honestly. I just simply don't see it. So when I leave this press conference, uh, I left it looking, feeling a lot more like this looked a lot like a press conference given by the defense lawyer for the officers, as opposed to a neutral fact finder who is the DA for this entire county. So I'm going to uh, put Mark Garagos in the unique position of being a defense lawyer for the DA uh, in this particular case, because there are those who may have watched that press conference and said, holy smokes, I saw, you know, a police officer, uh, you know, sort of put up on the hood of the car and another one had to jump out of the way and a third one who had to race a car out of the way so he wouldn't get hit by this guy. And it's because of people like you and the number of years I've spent on the air, I learned that a, a car is a deadly weapon. Legally, a car is a deadly weapon. So defend the DA in, in, in what he said, because Trent makes a very compelling case. Well, I, I don't know that I can defend the DA in this situation. I'm the DA, I think, um, and this points out to the problem, and it isn't just in this particular state, it's nationally. The DAs have no business uh, investigating these cases. The DA um, should, has got a symbiotic relationship with the cops. The cops endorse them. They need the endorsement. They get reelected. They can't, they, uh, in most cases, cannot come in and charge the cops. You take a look at the body cam right here. There, there was no reason in the world to be shooting from behind, executing him from behind. Um, this should have been a case that the, and it still may be where the feds come in and the feds do the justice here because if you saw the 40 whatever seconds that was clipped out and it was shown today, it was clear what had happened. This always, this is a pattern I see in all of these cases where we uh, bring these civil rights actions across the country. The cops get all hyped up. They get, the, they're all, they're in a frenzy. It's like they're going to uh, a football game and the coaches psych them up and they're sitting there in the bed of the pickup truck and then they get, they storm this place and the person in the car is trying to leave. He didn't try to run over the cops. It was obvious he was trying to leave. And it's obvious that the cops uh, were in no danger because they're shooting him in the back of the head. So um, there really is no defense to this. The DA really should have just recused himself. And the feds, I predict, will come in at some point and do something here because the, uh, the idea that this was a justified shooting is precisely why uh, most people don't buy um, the uh, the stories that the DA was telling. And by the way, Ashley, did you watch that press conference? This DA, I hope this DA's got more sk a better skill set in court than he does in the press conference because he was well, abysmal in the press conference. You're not getting the job without question. That is not a, a hire I, for you. Um, quote the late great Antoine Scalia: "You know, the criminal defense lawyer has got the ability to turn down a client." In this case. I'm turning down the client. So, well, then I'll do the job here. And I'm no, uh, you know me, I'm not even a lawyer for Pete's sake, but I will yeah, say but you this. Like playing when DA, I, you like playing one on TV. I know that. I certainly do enjoy it. Um, uh, so, but the, the DA today made some points that I, you know, I'm always taking down the, the nuggets of information and not just the flowery language that's, that's used. And some of these nuggets stood out. He said that while it might look awful that they showed up in the bed of a pickup with, you know, heavy artillery, AR-15, etc., this guy had two felony warrants. I believe it might have been for fentanyl and other drug use. Those are lethal drugs that people who, if he allegedly was doing this, could have died at his hands. Um, they had a search warrant. Apparently, he had a propensity to resist. This is the information the officers had. He had a propensity right. to resist arrest. He had a propensity to barricade himself. And he had a habitual felon status. So with, with that in mind, I do want to play. Right. Let me ask you what something, the, um, though. Okay, you just, fire away. Go ahead. You just, saw, you just saw that pickup truck going by. What did that remind you of? It reminds me of the scenes you see in Iraq or Afghanistan with a bunch of jihadists in a, in a pickup truck, usually a Toyota, not in this case, running around uh, screaming and yelling and, and doing whatever. And that's exactly what they did here. The bed is open. They come barreling out. What's he going to do with the fentanyl? Is he going to 
throw the pills at the cops and tell them, here, take the fentanyl, I'm going to drug you? I mean, it's well, nonsense. Well, Mark Garagos, he has, I'm going to repeat it. What? He has a propensity to resist and a propensity to barricade, and he's a habitual felon. So, I mean, that's, I think Ashley, that might Ashley, be the reason. Not Ashley. that they thought he was going to throw, throw drugs. Go, go ahead, go ahead. Right. He was going to, his look, propensity Ashley, for violence is going to swallow Mark makes a point the here that, that I would agree with. Look, this is not, the, you can go down the litany of things, and, and believe me, I think it was no coincidence that this DA started his press conference with this litany of all the bad behavior and the character evidence that he had, that he believes, um, describes Mr. Brown. But the reality is, whether or not he was a drug dealer, whether or not he has propensity not to hang around for warrants, whether or not he has a propensity not to show up for court, none of those things suggest that he was a violent man. None of those things suggest that he was someone who was going to present these officers with the need to use a lethal force in bringing him to justice. And the idea that a car, a moving car, sure, it can inherently be a dangerous, deadly object. But this car, when it's immobile, this car, when, it's this, when, when the driver decides to move the car forward and it's driving away from the officers, it is, cannot reasonably be meant to say. Well, again, that I'll, that I'll play defense lawyer here. I'm shocked. Again, I get two defense lawyers on. I can't get a defense out of you guys, but I will say <laughs> because this. Because it's, he it's was indefensible, straight. Ashley. It's a, this is There's a, a defense for everyone. No, there's a there defense, isn't a for, defense for this. Um, this is nonsense. Look at this you. Really You're nonsense. ruining your profession, Mark Aragos. No, okay, let me I'm get not, this because, out. Because the you've got a today... prosecutor. You've got a prosecutor, Ashley, who is who knows that he gets he has to be elected. He's he's currying favor with law enforcement, um, and there's uh, that's the the end of it. I mean, this so you is think not, it's political only? It's totally political. This isn't okay. a, a reason detached analysis. This is nonsense. So one more thing he said in the press conference, and we just saw it at the tail end of that little video that we were playing, was that when Andrew Brown was fleeing, he was fleeing directly into another police officer's vehicle. And that police officer had to uh, peel out of there, uh, otherwise would have been hit dead on uh, yeah, but, where his but by uh, the way, where he sat, the driver's side. They're shooting in direct line with a house. Who was, what if somebody's occupied in a house? How many times yeah. have we seen bullets going Lincoln. in? Yeah, let, let me get uh, Deputy Craig Milan here. Um, so, uh, uh, Deputy, by the way, welcome to the uh, being on a segment with these two attorneys. It's remarkable. I mean, they're they know more about the law than most people have ever been able to study. Um, but this was interesting when the attorney for the family of Andrew Brown. Um, had a chance to, I mean, they had a chance to look at the body cam first, right? And Chance Lynch had a very different interpretation of what the DA said today. So let me play what that attorney said, and I, I want to ask you something about it on the other side. Take a look. When they arrived on the scene, all of them were yelling different things. Some of them were saying, show your hands. Another was saying, get out. It was so much yelling that we could barely understand what they were saying. So I can't imagine what was going through Mr. Brown's mind with him having to sit there and hear this, not knowing what to do. Even with both hands being shown at all times, when the first shot fired, he was sitting in his car and then he began to back up. Uh, so I wish that I could, um, you know, either confirm or deny what, you know, that attorney said, Chance Lynch, but, as our two attorneys have said, Deputy Craig Mile, I can't because they didn't release the whole video. I am a real fan of going over every piece of evidence, you know, like combing it, right, with a lice comb, because I always find really important stuff. Is there anything to what he said that um, bothers you, just in terms of what you what you did see play out today in the news conference, Deputy Craig Mile? Yeah, I would have liked to have seen the video in its entirety as well, as I think the rest of the nation would like to see it. That's why we wear body cameras. Um, is to prove or disprove what happens whenever we're interacting with the public. Uh, one thing is, you know, a lot of people are talking about defunding the police and or defunding or moving funds to other types of areas in law enforcement or to educate. I think if we have more money to educate law enforcement and for training, what he's talking about on all of the chaos that's going on, um, all of the officers or deputies that are saying different things, uh, that's one thing that I have been taught in my training in law enforcement is to have a calm demeanor. We're the professionals. We need to remain professional out there. 
And if you're yelling, you've got to yell above the other person. That person's got to yell above the other person. And chaos breeds chaos. So I think, uh, you know, training comes into play here. And can you train for every scenario? No, you can't. That's why whenever I've always trained new officers or new deputies, I've always asked them to, whenever they're driving around, play scenarios out in your mind as to how you would act or react to situations out there because they everything is evolving here. And I think that these two attorneys have um, spoken really well about uh, the evolving aspects on a traffic stop or going to a call like this. We know that uh, he's selling fentanyl. He's got to be taken into custody. Um, but it seems more and more nowadays, uh, instead of holding the suspect accountable, it's always holding law enforcement accountable, no matter how minute uh, things happen out there on the streets. I mean, I think there's definitely been a trend. I'm, you know what? I, I'm going to get all of you to weigh in on that again, but I do have to squeeze in a very quick break. And guys, when we come back, I want to put this to you as well. The DA said we could do better. So I want to sort of weigh in on that part and say, what does that mean? What does it mean to do better? And does it mean anything for the public out there? Does it mean drug dealers get an easier pass if we're serving warrants? That's next. We're keeping a close eye on the community of Elizabeth City, North Carolina tonight after the aftermath or in the aftermath of the district attorney announcing no charges for three deputies who fatally shot Andrew Brown Jr. while serving warrants. Back with me again, attorneys Mark Garagos and Trent Copeland, as well as Deputy James Craig Mile. Uh, OK, so Trent, I want to ask you about what I said before the break. Do better. They said they could do better. What do you think that means quickly? I think it means having greater transparency, first of all. I think it means having accountability, and I think accountability comes with transparency. And I think a, an awareness that, you know, the lives of black men matter. And I think if that happens, then I think the community will feel a little more comfortable about these investigations, and I think these investigations will have much more confidence resonating throughout the community. So, Mark Aragos, do you think this family has a civil case that they could prevail, uh, given the fact there were no charges? And I have to do it quickly because I only have a minute left. Yeah, absolutely. They will prevail. There'll be a civil settlement or a verdict in this case. I, in fact, in that state uh, last week, there was a $75 million verdict in a wrongful conviction case. And by the way, um, the body cam footage is paid for by the taxpayers. I don't know where this uh, judge or this DA get off thinking that they can just hold back the body cam uh, footage. Yeah. So it's taxpayer okay. funded. And it should be released. 10 seconds, Craig Mile, real quickly, do you think this is going to cost the city uh, just in terms of protests? Literally 10 seconds. I think it will, but I think uh, parents need to start parenting their kids and stop teaching hate and spread respect and love, and this will fix itself. Yeah. All right, well, listen, all three of you, let's get together again. I always enjoy it, um, and you have a valid, valid point of view. Everyone should hear. Thank you, all three of you. I appreciate it.